Here's the original transmission out of the truck I'm working on. It's a 2012 Silverado, 4.3 liter, so this is a 4L60E. There's the code over there, it's 2012, and CBD is 4.3 liter Sierra or Silverado. This has no external neutral safety switch. This is exactly what it looks like, it's all internal. The reason that's significant is I need to replace this. This thing is demolished. It got so hot that the torque converter turned purple. So I'm not even going to try to mess with this because I'm not a transmission guy. So I picked this guy up from the junkyard and it is probably the cleanest transmission I've ever seen from the junkyard because apparently it was rebuilt uh, about six months ago, which is pretty awesome. So took the pan off to fix the hole in it. Here's the inside. But there's one issue. So both of these transmissions, this is a 2008, both of these have the internal speed sensor, which started in 2007. The computer needs that. I don't feel like monkeying with it. But this has the external neutral safety switch. So I've got the wiring for that. Goes on there. I'm going to splice that into my harness. And here's the torque converter of the one I just pulled from the junkyard. Blue, normally neat means it's remanufactured. So if you can look through the inspection plate and see a blue one, that's a pretty good sign. And also this one has the sticker on it, which is about eight months old at this point. So it sat on the shelf for about two months, was thrown in the transmission. The truck got junked because it had a little bit of an accident, but transmission's fine. So there we go. Pretty good junkyard score. Now here's the internal harness to the original 2012 4L60E, and you can tell the 1999 to 2006, and then it changed in 2007 to 2013, and they added this internal speed sensor. And you can tell that externally by looking at this plug, which is normally at the top of the transmission on the outside. If it's green, it does not have the speed sensor. Brown has the speed sensor. This plug here is for the internal neutral safety switch. So this is the one that I need to copy and rewire to the outside. It has six pins. And I've already stuck a meter on these and checked to which pins they're going to. And compared it to this chart, which gives you the pin numbers and what it's supposed to be. These are the ones I need. For my six pins, it's ABCP, ground, and park neutral position. So those are the six that I need to splice into. So I'm going to go mess with the other one and see what we come up with. So to give you a quick overview of what happens when you shift your transmission, this is the linkage that connects to your shift lever. So when you move that, this internal pawl moves and has a detent to lock it in whatever position you're in. And that locks this cylinder internally to a certain position which tells the fluid which way to travel and which gear to go in. So now I'm going to test which wires are, are what when it's in each position. That way I can splice it in correctly. And I went online, got the wiring diagram for this type of connector which is the 03 to 06. Actually I take that back, it's 03 and up. Because this was an 08 and it had it. So they use these on a bunch of things. Labeled everything all my wires and the ones that are positions like wire number four which is pin four is the B which is one of the ones I need so I'm going to check all these make sure it's ground and not so here is pin seven which is my ground so we'll clip onto that guy so this on ohm so we can see when it runs through And here's the wiring diagram I used for this style switch. You can see the pin numbers for the wires and the same six connections. I know it's showing five and then my number six is uh, the ground right there in the middle. So those are my should be my six wires, but I'm going to confirm that. All right, so now I'm going to check my wires and I'm going to make a little diagram and figure out if I'm connected correctly. So right now I'm in park, got one clamp on ground. Let's see what range switches 
are connected. So in park, I've got connection, connection to A. Got a connection to P. So A and P are my two connections. Check my hot wires just in case. Nothing to them. So A and P. A and P. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to go through, I'm going to check these all. I won't bore you with it, and I'll come back to show you my chart. Went through all my gear selectors. Here's what I came up with. This is gear selector position, and the neutral connects to these sets of wires in each position, and also in park, the park neutral position switch wire connects to wire 11, which is a positive 12 volt. And I'm not sure how that's gonna work because on the other transmission, there is no positive 12 going to the internal. So I'm about to go to the other transmission and do the same process, make sure they're the same. So you may be asking yourself, so why would you change the transmission out? Why not just get this one rebuilt or just replace the torque converter? And here's a really good example of why. So this is the fluid from the bad one. That's the fluid from a good one. It is nasty. There is no comparison, and there is no doubt in my mind that the original, well, we'll call it the original, whatever it is, transmission is completely smoked on the inside. I bet those clutches are nasty. Could be other damage that I'm not even aware of, so. It's about 1400 bucks to get this one rebuilt probably, plus a new torque converter. Those are two or 300. This guy was a hundred bucks and it was rebuilt six months ago. Yes, I'm still taking a risk. You know, there could be something wrong with it, but everything I saw looked good. The vehicle itself was messed up. So that's why it was in the junkyard. It wasn't anything mechanical. It was physical to the vehicle. One thing when you're getting junkyard transmissions, one thing I like to do is look for good fluid and that might seem obvious, but that's Pretty quick way to know if you're going to be dealing with issues. The fluid in this guy, I mean, it looked brand new because basically it is. And I've pulled a bunch of transmissions from the junkyard and I've never got a bad one. And mostly because I checked the fluid. And there are ones that I wish I want, but when I check the fluid, it looks bad, so I just don't get them. You got to pass on those. Fluid looks like that where it's black and brown. Don't get it. Or get it with the understanding of you're probably going to have to rebuild it. So anyways, that's my little explanation of why I'm doing this, because I'm saving about 1300 bucks by using what's hopefully a good one, which we'll be finding out at the end of this video, because I'll drive the truck with it. So onward to my testing the switch in this one, now that I got it over here in my drain pan. Here we are inside the 2012 transmission, and valve body's just taken off during my initial testing. So what we're looking at here is the internal neutral safety switch. And I have my wiring harness here. And I've got it plugged in just to my internal switch, which you can see here is this plastic piece. So the way the internal switch works is this plastic is normally held in position by that detent spring. So the spring holds that. And then when this lines up with each notch, that's when the signal changes. So I've got it plugged in. And I'm just going to use my meter, stick it into my connector here, and use this pin out, which I wrote on the back, so yeah, kind of screwed that up. But uh, you see ground is the N, so I'm going to use that as ground, and then check it the same way I checked the other one. Put this in each position, park, Reverse neutral, blah, blah, and see what's connected to what. 
Like I said, there's no positive power going to this. I already checked it against the pinout, and I checked it against this to see. So I'm going to be interested to see where how the park neutral position switch works. Okay, I went through, checked every position with my meter. So what we came up with is this. So the original one in park, I had, sorry, not the original one, the 2008 in park, the park neutral position wire was connected to positive 12 volts, which was pin 11. But in the 2012, it is connected to ground. So according to the internet, these are interchangeable and all you gotta do is wire in the outer sensor, but they're not. This uses positive, this uses negative. All I should have to do, I already checked it all, wire 11, which is positive 12 volts on the external switch, isn't connected to anything else in any position. So I'm gonna connect wire 11 to ground, that way when I'm in park, I'll get that ground signal the same as the 2012. The only problem is on the 2012, in neutral, I also get uh, ground going to that PNP wire. And I have, in the external switch, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't connect to power or ground. It's just B and P. So, I'm not sure how that's gonna work. I'm not sure. The weird part was on the external switch, there's no wiring connection to tell the computer that you're in neutral, but normally you can start an engine in neutral. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. I checked it like four times. But anyways, other than that, all of my wiring was identical, except for that positive 12 volt on the external, but ground on the internal. Switch wire 11 over, in my mind that should work. Uh, hopefully I don't burn my truck down, but that's what we're going to do. Laziest employee ever. All right, finally back up under the truck. Got my transmission installed. So what I did was I took the external neutral safety switch wires and I just used little vampire connectors to temporarily hook these all in just to test this. If it works, I'll just solder everything in to make it look good. Do it the right way, it's just for testing. So I've got everything connected. I uh, ran my 11 and ground together to the ground. So the three that are not connected are wires 12, 10, and whatever that yellow one was. So I'm gonna finish this up, put some oil in this thing, and uh, see what happens. All right, I got Cat over here running uh, HP tuners with his feet. So what I'm doing, if you don't know, HP tuners also has diagnostic tools. So what I turned on was, come on, dude. What did you turn on? So what Cat turned on was it shows the trans current gear. Right now the vehicle's off, it always says third. But it also shows you your torque converter slip and your torque converter clutch duty cycle among other things. But this is what I'm looking for when I'm testing transmission stuff. I'll be able to record this while I'm driving. So I have the everything connected, vehicle off, and I have a pretty good sign because when I shift, you'll see it change on the dash. Now what I did was I unplugged the neutral safety switch plug, and that little line down there went away and it wouldn't show anything. So that tells me that on these model trucks, it gets that information from the neutral safety switch in the transmission, or in this case, on the side of the transmission. I didn't know if it was gonna be internal in the column here, but like I said, I disconnected it and it didn't do anything. That line went away. So, looks like we're good. I'm gonna double check all my fluids. Cat's gonna stand by on the laptop and we're gonna fire this guy up. All right, test drive is over and I'll kind of show you what went on. So this is an old log file from before I changed the transmission. So this was my bad transmission. So what we're looking at here is the transmission was slipping. So you can see right here, doing 11 miles an hour. I'm in second gear. So the transmission shifted, but I'm slipping 
all of my RPMs. So I'm barely moving 11 miles an hour, 1400 slip out of 1440. So I had about 50 RPM driving the vehicle. So this basically was the issue I was dealing with right here. You can see as I kept accelerating, uh, well, accelerating on the pedal, I wasn't accelerating on the vehicle and I was still slipping completely. So now we'll go to today's test drive. All right, so for today's, today's test drive, here I am just starting out, put it in drive one mile an hour. I do have a lot of slip, but I have the uh, torque converter clutch hasn't engaged yet. Now, even right here, if you look, I'm going four miles an hour and I'm only slipping half my RPM and that's with no duty cycle yet. So that already tells me I'm doing pretty good. So right here, torque converter pops in straight to 97%. Not sure why it's doing that. That's something I'm going to have to look into. I needed to change the transmission first. So I'm slipping around 400 at 1400 RPM. So what I'm noticing here, just looking at this, is it's commanding the clutch to come on, but I'm still slipping 400. If we go back a little bit, right here with 0% I'm slipping 400 so that tells me I might have something else going on right there I have the same slip with it on or off so I've fixed the transmission but now I need to fix whatever this this is so I don't know if it's gonna be a wiring issue or what it's gonna be this is a previously owned truck so I'm not sure who did what to it but Today's video is completed. This kind of answers the question is, can you switch a earlier external MLPS switch to a later MLPS internal switch? And yes, you can. Everything seems to be working fine as far as the transmission is concerned, except for this duty cycle, which I think was the original problem that burned up the other transmission. So I'm gonna dig into the computer some more and see what's going on. I've already pulled the entire wiring harness and it's good, or looks good, but I'm gonna double check it now that I know that transmission is fixed. I don't wanna burn this thing up. So I just drove it a little bit and everything looks pretty good as far as the electrical is concerned for the gear selector. So that's it.